The Caped Crusader's ongoing film saga ranks among the top five highest grossing movie franchises in the United States, but he's also faced his share of setbacks along the way. For every bat blockbuster that made its way to theaters, there's a take on the character that's unceremoniously died in development. Here's the history of every one of those cancelled Batman movies. The Batman. Getting Tim Burton's 1989 Batman onto the big screen was a difficult process. Ten years before Michael Keaton made his Dark Knight debut, producers Benjamin Melnicka and Michael Uslan acquired the film rights to Batman so they could adapt the character in the same vein as Superman. They wanted to have a definitive, dark version of Batman on film, and producers John Peters and Peter Goober agreed when they aborted the project in November 1979. Four years later, the script by James Bond and Superman screenplay co-writer Tom Mankiewicz, simply titled The Batman, was completed, focusing on Batman and Robin's origins, with the Joker as the central villain. While the Batman slash 007 version of Batman would have been awesome, the project went through multiple developers and producers, losing bits and pieces along the way. In the end, the studio hired Tim Burton to direct, who felt the treatment was too similar to Superman and would be a better fit for a TV series. He changed virtually every aspect of the movie, so while they didn't get everything they wanted, the producers still got their darker version of Batman on the silver screen. It just took a decade to make it happen. Robin's spin-off. When Chris O'Donnell joined the franchise as Robin for 1995's Batman Forever, he seemed poised for a long run as the character. He returned for 1997's Batman and Robin and planned to reprise his role in a possible fifth film, but that never came to fruition. Warner Brothers also briefly pursued a Robin spin-off, which O'Donnell confirmed as recently as 2012. As he told Access Hollywood, They were going to do a Robin movie back in the day, then Batman and Robin was such a bomb, they were like, scrap that, that was the end of that. Batman Unchained Joel Schumacher told Variety that he'd always planned to make three Batman movies, but unfortunately for everyone involved in Schumacher's Bat Saga, Batman and Robin tanked, sending the franchise into years of development hell and leaving that third movie unrealized. The problems weren't just at the box office, however. Akiva Goldsman, who wrote the screenplays for Schumacher's first two Bat flicks, opted not to return for the next installment. I Am Legend screenwriter Mark Protesevich took Goldman's play and came up with the name Batman Unchained, which focused on Scarecrow as the central villain. Schumacher wanted Nicolas Cage to play the fear-inducing bad guy, saying that he owed the world, quote, a real Batman movie. But Batman and Robin crashed and burned, taking Batman Unchained with it. Changing course completely, Warner Brothers started looking into the idea of making a Batman Beyond or Batman Year One film instead. Batman Dark Knight Writers Lee Shapiro and Stephen Wise had an idea for a full Bat reboot. This time, instead of Batman and Robin in their primes, the duo wanted to see Batman retired with Dick Grayson attending college. In the proposed film, Dr. Jonathan Crane, better known as the Scarecrow, still played a prominent role as a professor of psychology at Gotham University. Also appearing, Dr. Kirk Langstrom, who turns into the monstrous Man-Bat. The two doctors get into a confrontation and Crane accidentally Accidentally initiates Kirk's transformation into his bat-like form after seeing Man-Bat terrorize Gotham and that the city's residents are mistaking him for the real Batman, the Dark Knight comes out of retirement to clear his name. The darker idea was pitched to the studio, but after being passed through multiple levels of approval and a few confirmations from producers, the studio's director of development passed on the movie. Batman Year One Schumacher still wanted to give Batman fans a proper caped crusader, and his planned adaptation of Frank Miller's Batman Year One might have fulfilled that goal. Ultimately, the studio parted ways with Schumacher and went with Requiem for a Dream director Darren Aronofsky instead. After hiring Aronofsky, the studio bolstered the project's pedigree further by bringing Frank Miller himself on board to script. 
In an interview with IGN, Aronofsky urged fans to quote, toss out everything you can imagine about Batman. Everything. We're starting completely anew. Unfortunately, the studio didn't get into Miller's version of the script, so they hired the Wachowskis of Matrix fame to write a treatment. Again, the studio wasn't satisfied. So they turned to Joss Whedon, whose take also didn't pass muster with the studio. They finally ended up shelving the idea altogether in 2002. Batman Beyond. Warner Brothers also floated the idea of making a Batman Beyond film inspired by the hit animated show which had debuted in 1999. Bruce Timm and Paul Dini's series featured Terry McGuinness, a teenager who takes over the mantle of Batman under the guidance of a retired Bruce Wayne. The studio's movie division liked Batman Beyond so much that they wanted to make a live action version for the big screen. They hired Remember the Titans director Bohaz Yakin to helm the project with Dini writing the script. Sources told Variety in 2000 that a Batman Beyond film didn't interfere with Warner Brothers' plans to continue with a fifth Batman movie, but that changed quickly. By August 2001, Dini said that the studio had shelved the live-action adaptation. What's more, later that year, the Batman Beyond animated series was cancelled. Batman vs Superman Asylum Long before Zack Snyder's Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice hit the big screens, Warner Brothers previously had plans to pit the DC Universe's two biggest heroes against each other. Andrew Kevin Walker, who penned the incredibly dark Seven, pitched an idea that involved Batman coming out of retirement shortly after his wife's death to join a recently divorced Superman. Until, of course, they're duped by Lex Luthor into fighting each other. Sound familiar? Akiva Goldsman returning to the franchise once more revised Walker's script in 2002, which was enough to convince Warner Brothers to move forward with the project. At least for a little while. Wolfgang Peterson, director of Air Force One and The NeverEnding Story, intended to direct the film in 2003. Part the project was derailed when J.J. Abrams jumped into the fray with a script for a movie called Superman Flyby, which included a very different version of the Man of Steel. According to Peterson, the studio decided to try separate versions of Superman and Batman, instead resulting in Superman Returns and Batman Begins. Justice League Mortal 2017's Justice League wasn't the first attempt to bring Batman and the rest of the League to the big screen. In 2009, the first plan to bring DC's heroes together came awfully close to hitting theaters. Written by Kieran and Michelle Mulroney, Justice League Mortal was to be helmed by Mad Max director George Miller. Its cast included DJ Katrona as Superman, Army Hammer as Batman, Megan Gale as Wonder Woman, Adam Brody as The Flash, Common as Green Lantern, and Teresa Palmer as Talia Al Ghul, with Jay Baruchel playing the villain Maxwell Lord. Cameras were ready to roll, but the writer's strike of the late 2000s put a damper on the movie. The overwhelming success of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight convinced Warner Brothers that a Justice League with a different Batman simply wouldn't work. Justice League Mortal is the Justice League movie that never was. So when you're watching Ben Affleck throw down with Carl Drogo, just think about how much crazier it would have been if the director of Mad Max had gotten to the league first. What a lovely day! Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.